but I, I hate to be so negative, but it's a, it's a it's a book. It it's a book. It, it's good. It's okay. good. All right. Anthony Ryan, if you're watching this, I loved your book. It was the best book ever. <laughs> welcome back, folks. Welcome, welcome. To the Ramble, episode 16, we're doing a book review on The Pariah. Yeah, and this time we've actually both read the book. We have, and so... you recommended this book to me. I did. I I thought um, Austin loves a good plot twist. He doesn't want to see where it's going. And I think the pariah, if the one line elevator pitch is, it is the book that every time you think it zigs, it zags. Yes. And I think think my review of this will surprise you. Yeah. Okay. And I think we're going to have a lot to talk about. Mm. And this isn't a very well-known book. It's part of the Covenant of Steel series, yeah, right? But it's the I first mean, book, and the second book, The Martyr, behind it, is coming out, what, in a week or two? Uh, as of this... So as of this recording, when this episode goes live, yep. it will... This mm. book will come out a little over a week later. Okay. And then we'll have this, a review for that This comes out the well. 28th. Correct me if I'm wrong in editing. Yes. 30th or the 28th, I can't remember. And you got that insider, and we got Orbit to send you a book. That was so cool. Yeah, of them. I, that was I, very, very cool. Of it's kind of cool. That that yeah. was a big first for me, like yeah. getting a book before it's actually released. So thank you, Orbit. So cool. And this is Anthony Ryan's had other series like Draconis. Yes, he's uh, released Draconis Memoria, which I still think is my current favorite of his series. Cool. And then, of course, the first, first series, The Raven Shadow. Um, that's where a lot of people started to like him that's where he got his fame awesome so the pariah do we want quick spoiler spoiler free spoiler free yes yeah, spoiler free overview what would be your pitch of this book and if someone wants to pick it up first of the covenant of steel second book's coming out what's exciting about it give your overall uh, sure. opinion if you'd like the standard fantasy like you're into fantasy books in general so you're reading john gwen you're reading brandon sanderson you're reading all the the regular modern day fantasy authors and you want someone who it, uh, you want a book that deliberately cuts against the tropes of the modern fantasy genre pick up the pariah i, I think it's a pretty good read like, yeah. I, I think it's pretty good so yeah what do you think uh w- would you say plot wise for this you should go in expecting a revenge story mm, no it mm. this plot is a it's not so much revenge. It, you are following a character through multiple little adventures as they're kind of dragged along through the story. Yeah, the first person, Pav, and it's written from the main character from when he's much older. So you get a lot A lot of the narrative around it is him talking about what's going on and then what he found out later and yeah. his thoughts later on the situation that's happening as he's writing, uh, as he's writing that situation. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd say it's a... Bit gory may be the wrong term, but there's a lot of action. There's a lot of blood and unexpected twists. So if you're looking for something like that, spot on. Actually, this reminded me a little bit the the first inkling mm-hmm. I got of Game of Thrones esque. Now they're different things entirely. However, it it reminded me of that Game of Thrones not afraid to kill off people. So the unexpectedness sure. of uh, of that twist of Spoiler alert, but Ned Stark dies. <laughs> so that, that happens in Game of Thrones. But this, you know, you might be thrown for a few surprises. And his writing style is unique. Uh, I will, we'll actually get deeper into that. But yeah. overall, spoiler-free uh, score. I gave the overall score. Oh, this is the rating now. Yeah. So just sp- Spoiler-free is out. Now I'm giving rating of the book. Rating of the book, um, 6.65 for the pariah. 6.65, which mm-hmm. on the scale being above 5, you say that's good, decent? That, How, is, a, that uh, is a good score. Um, uh, like, It's good, and hope it gets better. So I, I got to read a lot of books. So um, I would say 8, you have to pick up now. Like, mm-hmm. where were, where are you? 7 is, it's really good. You should read it. 6, it's good. Good, and you give it 6.65. Good, six, six, if five. you're looking for something to read, and it suits your preference, right. read it. Five is neutral. It's not really, it's not good. It's not bad. Just it is a book. <laughs> right. Well, I give it. Clo- I give it a five point three for my rating of the Pariah. 
So just above that five benchmark. So Dang, it seems pretty like, low. It seems like you liked it a bit more. Yeah. You're not in love with it, infatuated by it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so th- I think we'll have some interesting stuff to talk about. Because right. I, I've been really thinking about this and reeling with it the past couple of days. Okay. And it's been sitting with me. So that's that's our overall rating. We've got a 665, and we've got a 53. Overall for me is it's a – I'm very neutral about the book. I'm glad I read it, and I have the information. I'm like, all right, cool. Get I got Anthony Ryan's style. I'm, I'm interested in his other works. I don't want to judge it by the first I read of his. But also, it's a, we'll get into specifically why I rated it 5.3. Now, right. that, that out, outright doesn't mean I didn't dislike the book. A dislike would have to be sub-5. So the way we use our rating system, yeah. if you're giving it a, like a, a, above a 5, is means it's not bad. That's, that, I'll say that. Sure. So Well, all right. If you don't want any spoilers, you want to get the book, click off now. We're going right into spoilers. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Got enough time. So, starting off, just kind of overall thoughts. What, what yeah. were some of the stuff that kind of really pulled this book down for you? So, overall, we're getting the specific categories like characters and plots, right? Mm-hmm. So, a few things specifically. And I want to get into them. Like I said, these I have a lot to say about these specific things. But number one would be the plot structure. Okay. Felt very disjointed. So when I mean disjointed, it was very hard to see the end goal or it was hard to root for a specific and get tied to a certain plot line because at one point we are uh, we are outlaws and now we go to the pit mines and now we are in kind of a religious zealotry cult and now we're looking for treasure and now we're hunting Lauren. And then it kind of gets twisted where it starts off with this revenge journey of where he's really determined to get payback for Deccan Skarl. Mm-hmm. and he's really strong in that for a couple chapters, and then it kind of fizzles out just a little bit, and then throughout the book, it's kind of like he forgets about the revenge, and then it comes back in the end, and it just it just felt tough for me to root for at any point or get behind, like, oh, this is the, yeah, where's this going to lead? Because I know Anthony Ryan's just going to throw us for a twist again. Mm. Did you see these? I know you love your revenge stories. Yeah. You love a good revenge story, and you wouldn't classify this as revenge, would you? No, in many ways, like, he kind of moves on from revenge. Okay. But uh, for me, what, I I think it took me like a third of the way book, a third of the way into the book to realize that this is not a plot-centered story. Like, you're not following it for the plot, you're following it for the character. Yeah. And the unique part about Alwyn Scribe is he constantly portrays himself and he thinks of himself as a really, like, wretched person and willing to betray like he is he considers himself very villainous but you see in multiple interactions like when the chips are down he's more than often willing to do the right thing and willing to sacrifice for like friends and like actual loyalty and you just see that evolution of him so you're following him as from like how does this outlaw low life turn into the knight and like scribe like he goes like the most 180 of a character journey yeah possible like low life gang member to scholarly knight scribe for religious uh religious uh martyr woman how the hell do you get there right <laughs> and how does he see himself and that's what you're that's what i was kept carrying on so i i was following for him and seeing how he changes, yeah, and how you rec- how other people recognize the change, and how he himself. Okay, that's that's what I liked in each little plot line. Gotcha. Is seeing how he changed. Gotcha. So that's our quick overview of like that's the first thing that comes to mind for us about yeah. this book, right? So Let- do you want to get into the specific? Uh, so our our main categories here. So emotionally, our emotional okay. impact wise, what did you rate the emotions toward this book, and what did you feel about it? I gave it a 7.25. 7.25, so good. Good score. A really, a really good emotional impact score. I gave it a flat 6, so above average. Mm-hmm. I felt all right about it. I felt decent about it. And what gave you that? What did you really get behind, and how did you feel throughout the, reading the book? Well, when reading the book, one, the twists did get to me. Yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, wow. I didn't see that coming. Okay. So it, I got surprised a couple times. Um, I was feeling for 
I, I really liked Alwyn. Scrub. I, I liked him as a character. Mm-hmm. He was fun, where typically in a lot of these stories, you get like the more powerful character. And even if they start off weak, they become strong and heroic. He never does. <laughs> he yeah. he really is like scholarly and you know, he knows how to he he can rough and tumble in a little fist fight, but like he's not a fighter. He never is. Doesn't seem to want to be. He looks like a fighter on the cover though. He does. He, <laughs> he does look like, like you, a fighter. You look at this cover, the first thing you think is, Oh my god. It's a cool. Assassin's Creed part five. Oh and I know. Instead, you get oh, I'm a scribe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's me. I'm, that's not even me making fun of. It. I do, I do see the the plot line was, uh, and I, I have I'll have other things to say there. But did you see the cover here? And did you get the revenge part in the outlaw? You you know we're seeing he's an outlaw for the first couple of chapters. Did that set your expectations? And did that set them at a certain level they did or did not hit? Like were you coming into here going I want this and got something else? I, I'll be honest, I. For the most part, I try and look at what the book is trying to do. Yeah. And then I judge it on that. And I, I can fairly quickly abandon my own preconceived notions of a book. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's clearly not what the book is going to be. Well, let me judge it on what it's going to be. Right. Like, what it is. So, I mean, that happened with, I remember when we were watching The Northman. Like, uh-huh. what I wanted was a just classic revenge story. What we got was something very different. And I'm okay with that. But... This book, I I liked the characters. I liked the surprisings of the plot. So that's why I gave it like a 7.25 because it carried okay. me to the end. The emotion got you there. And by the end, you felt, are you excited to read The Martyr, the next book in the series? I am. I was excited. I mean, I was excited enough to ask Orbit for a review exactly. copy. Yeah. So I, I liked this one well enough to read the next one. So Awesome. Okay, so emotionally, that's that's where we're sitting at. I was a uh, my my emotions will get more explained as we get to other categories. But I felt all right about it. I was, I, I liked the journey well enough to go. Okay, that was interesting. It was interesting to me, but I wasn't, I wasn't in love with it, and mm. I felt some of the. You know, let's get into everything else so sure. we can get more. Let's specific. go into characters. Characters. What did you rate characters? Six point seven five. Okay, not far off. I give it a six, flat six. And what gave that the 675? Who was your favorite character? I mean, Alwyn. Alwyn? That, um... Was that an easy answer? Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Okay, I disagree. Oh. I disagree. Your opinion's wrong, so... <laughs> uh, my Mine was more so... I didn't love Alwyn as much. Mm-hmm. And the, who really stood out for me was Deccan Scarl. He's not in it for much, though. I know. But that's that's why he stood out ah, so much. Maybe that's why is... he didn't like the book as much, because your maybe, favorite yeah. character is He's barely in it. <laughs> no, a lot of it is was po- posthumously how much he affected the world. It was really cool as well. So not only uh, not only while he was alive and how cool, just interesting of a character he was, raising Alwyn, and how we later find out from uh, um, Liren, or not Liren, Loreen, Loreen, uh, mm-hmm. but how we later find out that he actually had all these kids in whorehouses, just get them sent to wood, get them sent to the woods, and then yeah. he would go and raise some of them and not others, and so he really messed up. But at the same time, you have this almost Stockholm-like syndrome from mm-hmm. Alwyn to to Deck and Scarl, and just the the brutality of him and how his him being the outlaw king has spread throughout the kingdom and you always hear about him even after his death well after his death yeah is he he had a presence and his character was there and i could always I, when i think deck and scarl i'm like i can realize that character hmm. whereas with the main character owen i found him interesting enough like you know it's similar and you're gonna disagree hard with this but you know the great gatsby yeah kind of how it's them looking at the story that's happening i almost felt as alwyn was kind of the things were just ha- happening to him throughout this journey yeah and it was a lot of it was a lot of situations where you obviously know he's going to survive which isn't an issue you, you can go in there reading the story knowing because he's writing the thing yeah and you know he's going to live but just a lot of the situations i found myself rather apathetic toward him Hmm. And did you, was there somewhere where he got you? Where did the main character get you? When he became a scribe. So like right he, around when he was in the he pit pits, when he was in the okay. pit mines, it's where I really started like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. like this, vil, this uh, scumbag uh, thief, robber, you know, gang member finds God and finds faith and was like, 
actually becomes scholarly and has great respect for his teacher and you just go like what <laughs> well he wasn't necessarily faithful he was kind of yeah he was very he was the only one when we get to lady evadine mm-hmm. wasn't the religious zealot but by the end defends her uh, yeah well again it, it more complex in the religion but yeah. he had such respect for his teacher and and became like really steady heart and really turned his life around in basically prison Mm. and seeing he has a new side to himself and you see kind of both competing with each other and people from his past kind of say like how they see him and i just really enjoyed how he was like two different characters competing Mm. with each other and so that that character carried me through and what i enjoyed did you like the cast around him like toria oh uh, she's probably my favorite secondary character Gotcha. Because of how unique she was. Like, you just, okay. when you first get introduced to her, you go, oh, main love interest. Okay. He saves her, blah, blah, blah. They're going to, you know, grow closer in prison and all that. Mm. Nope. They're just pals, just bros. I love some platonic relationships love it's a surprising it. platonic again it's a trope and they subverted the trope i gotta say i have a lot to say about this when we get the plot but that wasn't super surprising to me because i felt like this was so uh, the things that happened it was so unexpected that the unexpected became expected so it, it came unpredictable to a fault where everything was so unpredictable that that became predictable in and of itself Hmm. And I'll, the first scene I'll name of that, what, what comes to mind is when Ian, uh, that the one religious celibate girl that we meet, that she stabs, uh, what's his name in the balls, Ur- Urshel, is it? Yeah. The the dude, the Urshel, the bad dude. When we see Urshel bring her to the cabin and Arwen's about to, Arwen's about to go in there, the first thing I'm thinking is, oh, it would be like Anthony Ryan to write it that she stabs him and actually kills him because that would be the subversive thing to do. And that's exactly what happened, which isn't a bad thing again, but it happens so often that I, it kind of became jaded to it of anything could happen at any point. I'm just like, all right, this is, it's almost too much subverting the trope for me that I'm, mm. that I disliked it at points. I can understand that point. Personally, I didn't see the, the little girl stabbing him with balls. I, I did not see that point because I thought like, it was such a brutal book that I thought that uh, er, er, Erwin? Urschel. Urschel. Urschel, yeah. I, it was are a, tough for us. Yeah. We, we're having, sorry, Urschel. guys. We're having a tough time here. But, yeah, no, it was such a brutal book that I thought Urschel was actually going to like hurt her most of the way or something, okay. and then Owen would save her, kind of. Mm. Or he would just fail. <laughs> he goes into the saver and then just, nope, already dead. Mm. Like, that would that, that would have also been yeah. brutal, but no, she kills him, <laughs> kills yeah. him herself. So I thought, like I thought, the brutality moment was going to overtake the subverting. So it caught me off guard. Yeah, I mean, when Deck and Skrull died, that's the first that really got me emotionally. I was like, "Whoa, where's this story going?" And I was really interested mm-hmm. in the whole outlaw aspect and this revenge story. And as soon as that kind of faded and seemed unimportant to the. Uh, we're talking too much plot, but well, like, actually, let's move. Let's move, move right. Plot? Yeah. Let's move right into plot. So, plot. What'd you give it out of ten? I give it a seven point two five. I give it a five. So this is where we bigger. Dang. Where we different? Our yeah, differences are pretty. That's big the big here. difference. Yeah. Yeah. I I really liked the subvert subversive plot and how there's little kind of chunks of cohesive plot, but they're not overarching. Okay. Would the you... overarching. It's not an overarching plot. It's an overarching character journey. Mm. And so you see moments in his character journey that change him. Okay. And that, that's kind of how I saw it. Did you like the overall plot of Outlaw to Religious Zealotry? Oh, yeah. You did? I and did what, like it. What is there anything you didn't like about the plot? Why a 7 and why not an 8, for example? There's, two five, right? There's maybe some moments that could be cut... And I do understand a little bit about the maybe too much subversion, but even, and also the end. The end is predictable in a very subversive book when he goes back. And especially by the ending, 
the character brings you all the way to the end, but then after the end, you go, where does it go from here? Okay. So, like, I, I, I'm not really sure. Like, for the second book, I, other than Alwyn being with the martyr. Yeah. I don't really, I don't really know where it's gonna go. I agree with that. Like, I it could go I anywhere. Have no I have idea, no idea where the martyr's gonna go. Absolutely none. Because again, it's not a plot. It's plot moments for a character arc. I imagine the martyr's gonna be very different. Okay. Because there, the character arc is done now, and now we're like, I imagine it's probably gonna be a plot centric book, and that's kind of Anthony Ryan's thing. It's like the first book, The Blood Song, is similar to Pariah, though I think better. Okay. Blood Song, I think, is better than Pariah. In. But, and then the next book, Tower Lord, mm. drastically different. Drastically different plot structure and everything. So I am at, I, it's probably going to be the same. I will say it ended where I'm interested in the martyr. I am. Mm-hmm. I am definitely interested. But a, a lot of the issues I have with the plot, and I'm talking about the bad. I gave it a five, so I'm not going to talk. I like some things here and there, but mm-hmm. I'll talk more negatively just because you're more positive about it. The resetting of the plot was too much for me. It constantly resetting from revenge story to pit mine, escape the mine story. To you're so bored, you're yawning at me. Is that sorry? No. Or, it's no. a little late. It's a little yeah, late. We're down recording here. late today. <laughs> but, I can't control my yawns. <laughs> so we're it's resetting from the revenge story to scribing in the pit mines to uh, religious zealotry to being in the army to treasure hunting <laughs> to back to religious zealotry to being captured by the chainsmith to now a fight at the end so it was so much so that it was hard to go all right this is a you know the direction of the plot i i my expectations were set up in in the revenge way and i you didn't need to be that the whole book but the fact that we only got back to that the very last chapter where that revenge came back out and just a just a smidge of it it kind of felt like that dropped off and all the plot lines dropped off and came back up whenever they were necessary and whatever, you know, it could come back for, for some action. But that that's some of the issues I had. I also had an issue with, this is more world building, uh, but it being a fantasy book, there wasn't a lot of fantasy for me personally. But let, let's pause that for the world building section that we talked sure. about. Uh, but any, any last things you want to say about plot structure wise, do you like the pit mines the best, that portion of it? Or did you like the trajectory that brought the book to its end. Is that the part that you loved about Arwen's transformation? Yeah. Okay. I, I really liked seeing Arwen's perspective on how he thinks of himself and his inner, because his inner monologue is very important for this type of story because mm. you see what he does. So his own voice in the story, you because th- he thinks of himself a certain way, you think of him a certain way. Right. But then you look at his actions and what he actually does. What he does is very different from how he thinks of himself. Gotcha. And you just see that progress over time. That's enjoyable to me. Okay. Well, let, let me throw in a last nitpick for you. Sure. And let me know what you think on this. But it, it, I, I hate saying this because obviously it's a protagonist of a story. But mm-hmm. even for this being, you know he's going to survive regardless. It still felt overly plot armory where – the situations he got himself in were like, you know, he's just about to get killed by the chainsmith and then Laureen saves him, which is fine. Again, fine. It's just, I'm very neutral about it. Like, okay, that's fine. But you know, he's out in battle for the first time ever. And yes, he did train, but of all the people, he survives that and this and this and this. And they explain a bit with, it's kind of prophetic with the book and everything was meant to happen with the fate from the, the, that book that was translated yeah. at the end. But it, it's very nitpicky. It was just a bit too much of like, oh, he's about, you know, and then, okay, which can happen, but it happened so often I was a little bit taken aback. And lastly, I wasn't over, I, I wasn't super convinced by the over-explanation that needed to happen at some times where, like with Everdeen, with, with Everdeen at the end when she was captured, yeah, the explanation of why they didn't kill her immediately, which I understand, but it was kind of stuff like that was over explained to the bit of like, here's exactly why we have like two days to get there and save her. That's why they're not killing her. Or this is why they're not killing Alwyn uh, because there's a friend of Deccan Scar. And it's really explained, which I get it. I get it from the first like, yeah, yeah, I'm connected here, but it goes in depth about 
this is exactly why we can't do this. And it's almost like he was trying to convince me that the plot made sense. And I'm like, yes, it makes sense, but you're over. I get it. I get it. Okay. It was another nitpicky thing. I, and so I'm very neutral about the plot. It's like, it, I was there. I was like, okay, I was more, uh, I, I was, I was understanding it and going forward with it. But that's enough negativity on the plot. Right. Let's let's go on to what did you think about the dialogue slash prose and what did you sure. rate it? I gave it a six point five. Six point five? Yeah. Finally, come back, brother. Six point five as well. Yeah. We're it, right on that same level. It it's it's good. Mm-hmm. It, it has some good lines and some way dialogue. Where I'm like, yeah, they each character has some personality. Like, they don't all sound the same. Mm. Which, that's a lot of what I'm looking for in dialogue, and I'll I'll find in quite a few books that i'll generally enjoy with fantasy but most of the characters sound the same and they don't have a little bit of personality and edge to them in their dialogue that makes them different this book i I mean would you agree that the characters kind of sounded different in their dialogue they did other than the cursing everybody cursed yeah i I, I have a nitpick about cursing i i I love fantasy curses over modern cursing that's just i agree that's personal preference that's nothing that's not against him as an author i also want to throw in there just something of the like yeah with um with hunger of the gods shadow shadow of the gods they have a term for brain is (laughs) thought cage oh that's cool so like whenever the like you know, uh, he. You know, I'm gonna drag it out of you. I'm gonna drag that information out of your thought cage. Or <laughs> nice. they just use those words, and it's like, ah, it's fun. That but yeah, fun. I, I do like fantasy words as well. Yeah, I, I like the the writing was good, and mm-hmm. he had some. Uh, there were some really well written portions of you could the analogies he used in the description were really strong. Yeah, really strong in some portions. And yeah, just good. It was it was a good read, and I liked his his style. It was good to read, and I, he's a professional author, way better than anyone I've ever known or I will be. It's just really good stuff. And the more reason it's six point five versus not a seven or eight is personal preference. Of sometimes his fight scenes were overly descriptive. Mm. Um, so the the last fight scene was really good. I thought I thought he did that really really well. The last chapter, and I I give him props for that. That was the perfect amount of description and action, but the ones before that it was overly. I had I had a couple lines I wrote down. Uh, oh, you want to hear the most nitpicky thing ever? Oh yeah, the most nitpicky thing ever is he at one point he wrote unconcealed shock. Just say shock. I don't need. I obviously <laughs> it's unconcealed. It was. Just, I was just wait. Why? You're seeing it. Of course it's unconcealed. I was just so. It's like okay, uh, but there was that and also. Again, I'm going to get negative because I gave, I did give it a 5-3. <laughs> but there was a lot of what he would write is, uh, from Alwyn's perspective, he would say a lot to other characters, like, oh, normally I would lie in this situation, but she is keen, like Ian is keen, or Tori is keen, or Evadine's keen. All these people are keen about picking up lies to the point where there's no like comparison. Like it, the, the keenness isn't important because everyone's keen. So it no longer makes that an important feature of the character. So the way he would write yeah. that was a little bit jarring. I I what actually do you think that? I, I think I agree with you. I think you mentioned that uh, to me several days ago. Yeah, when and I was I was like halfway th- through the book. Yep. Made me think about it, and I think I do have to agree with you. That is, I didn't notice it while reading, but now you mention it, yeah, yeah, happens quite a few times. And last thing, see, I'm going to make you look like a saint on this book. I'm <laughs> making you look real good. Like, you love this thing. The last thing, he overused some words. And once again, like, who am I to tell this guy how to write? Nothing at all. It's just personal preference where he would write the words indulgent, indulge, like in that forms of that word, scant, conjecture. Those three words, like, there would be chapters where he'd use that word over and over again. And once again, it's just, I was listening to the audiobook. So I was doing a game in my head when I was driving in the car. I was like, and I would count indulges that he would say. Why are you bored at what I'm saying? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not my fault. All right, next topic. You pick it. <laughs> it's not my fault. I'm listening. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's that's some of my nitpicks. And so the fight scenes being over described sometimes. Some of the over usage of words. Uh, but overall, it's it's well written and he's really poetic about it. So props to him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It, it's about the same for me. But okay. let, let's move into world building. World building, which might be the most interesting discussion. I gave a 5.5. 5. So your lowest. Yeah. 
So I don't know if you'll agree with me or not, but I give it a three. It it hit the bad category for me. It actually went below not enough five. magic in there for you. That's part of it. Yeah. Did you ex- were you happy? Would you? There, there's a question out there. I just framed that five different ways before asking you. But there, mm-hmm. There's a question being asked, and, and there's some controversy on whether this should be labeled fantasy or more historical fiction slash fiction. What I mean, do you it, think? It's fantasy because it has like a weird fan- fantasy religion. It has some magic in it and fate seems to me that it's fantasy fair uh, i would say even the blood song mm. it the very first book in the series doesn't have a lot of magic mm. if at all like it's kind of hinted at but barely it is mostly action and it's like people okay okay second and third book lots of magic lots and lots of magic so i'm actually not sure it's possible that in the martyr, there's quite a bit more magic where Pariah starts off with very minimal. Got it. He's done it before. Maybe that's the case. Reason I give it a five point five is I, I can't really see the world itself. Like I, I don't really know where locations are. Me either. Can, the yeah. the cities, towns. The only thing that was very descriptive and that I can kind of see is the pit mines. I can see that. Agreed. And the, the the church inside the pit. So was were the that pit was, mines? Was that your favorite scene? Was that your favorite area of the yeah, book? Yeah, definitely. What is there any close seconds? Is there another place you go? Oh, I would like that. That place is interesting to me. Hmm. I think that was it. That was it. Maybe the. Um, maybe the woods. Honestly, maybe the, the woods. Maybe the woods, the Shireen, the Shireen Forest, right? I guess, but I mean, woods are woods. Yeah, that, that's what it came down to for me. I was for it being a fantasy book. The lack of a lot of fantasy. You have the Sack Witch and that, and and the reason a lot of people say it's more fiction slash historical fiction is like ninety five percent of the book there's no fantasy. It's really just a the pariah. It's this outlaw going around, and there's religious solitary and and have you. Uh, but you do have that fantasy element, which is very hinted at. But there wasn't; it seemed to be a lack of a magic system. You had the witch, the kind of soft magic there, but there there wasn't anything I was really interested in in the world. I was more so I was kind of there, and it was interesting enough. Like there's battles going on, and I like that there's the uh, there's King Thomas, and then there's the uh, can you remind me of the name the not the Pretender. Ah, yeah, yeah. That that was interesting in the world. Like, okay, there's a pretender and there's this king. And I, I actually we didn't talk about the king character, but he was we saw him briefly. Yeah, what did you a, think about him? It's the bat. It's a. I mean, he's a background character to mm-hmm. it. I, I imagine there'll be more in the next books. But, right. But no, it it just didn't feel as alive or memorable. Yeah. That that that's what it really comes down to. Where, again, Draconis Memoria series. Very memorable world. Like awesome. A, man, like, the world, I, I, I can still picture it. Like, there are several nations. I know how they're distinct. Magic system is cool. Mm-hmm. Creatures are unique. Just awesome. all the stuff about what you think of world building. The cities. There are different types of cities. So even in the same country, there are unique locations that feel unique. Where in the Praia is not so much. But mm-hmm. it's fine. It's a world. It's grim. It got the job done, but not okay. not anything super special. Okay. However, if you're getting into Anthony Ryan, like, if you read The Pariah and you're like, eh, don't know if I'll continue, try Draconis Memoria. I think it's his better work got so it. far. Okay. Yeah, so overall Pariah, we, we're not too far off. I'm just a little bit more negative Nancy than you on it. Yeah. Oh. You just got off the Sando train. See, that should be noted. I read this right after reading Stormlight Archive. It's a weird book to go right into. Yep. Yep, that's for sure. But I, I hate to be so negative. But it's a, it's a it's a book. It it's a book. It, it's good. It's okay. good. All right. Anthony Ryan, if you're watching this, I loved your book. It was the best <laughs> book ever. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, next week we will actually have a review on the martyr. I deliberately I got it early and I didn't read it till now because I didn't want to color my review of The Pariah. Awesome. I will now speed read that in a week. 
so I, we can get the review out for you guys. Hopefully this book's really good and we have some positive stuff to say. I'm hoping so. Cool. Alrighty. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. See you next week.